In New Orleans, just east of the French Quarter, lies a building larger than 50 football fields. Inside that cavern of steel and concrete, the United States forged the most powerful machine in human history. Here, at the Michoud Assembly Facility, raw sheets of aluminum became tanks big enough to drown a skyscraper. Welding torches traced seams longer than highways, and from this place rolled the stages of the Saturn V, the rocket that carried humanity to the moon. This is the story of how a factory once used to build warplanes was transformed into the birthplace of giants. Michaud was not new. During World War II, it produced engines and fuselages for bombers. Later, Chrysler built tank engines here. By 1961, when NASA chose Michaud for Apollo, the site had the floor space, but not the technology. The challenge was staggering. A Saturn V first stage, the S-1C, was 42 meters or 138 feet tall and 10 meters or 33 feet in diameter. No factory in the United States had ever attempted to build pressure vessels this large with tolerances measured in millimeters. NASA brought in Boeing as prime contractor for the S-1C and Douglas Aircraft for the S-4B, Saturn's third stage. Michaud became their cathedral of metal. The first task modified the plant itself. Floors were reinforced to carry the weight of massive tooling. Vertical assembly towers, nearly 50 meters tall, were installed to stack the barrel sections. Automatic welding machines, the largest of their kind, were designed specifically for Saturn. By 1964, Michaud was producing the largest welded aluminum structures in the world. Every Saturn stage began with sheets of 2219 aluminum copper alloy. Chosen for its strength at cryogenic temperatures, this alloy resisted cracking when chilled by liquid oxygen at minus 183 degrees Celsius or minus 297 degrees Fahrenheit. The sheets arrived flat. To turn them into rocket barrels, Michoud used machines called stretch formers. These giants clamped each sheet at both ends and pulled with hundreds of tons of force, bending the metal over precise dies. The result? Curved panels that could be joined into a cylinder. But cylinders alone were not enough. They had to hold propellants under enormous stress. A single S-1C fuel tank carried 770,000 liters or 200,000 gallons of RP-1 kerosene. Its liquid oxygen tank above it held over 1.2 million liters or 300,000 gallons. When filled, these tanks bore loads equivalent to a battleship standing on end. To assemble them, Michaud used submerged arc welding. A moving head laid down perfect seams up to 10 meters long. Molten metal was shielded by a blanket of flux, producing joints stronger than the parent metal. After welding, every seam was x-rayed. If even a pinhole was found, the panel was re-welded or scrapped. One defect could mean catastrophic rupture under pressure. Bulkheads were another marvel. The liquid oxygen tank dome was a single piece 10 meters across, spun on giant dies like a potter's bowl. 
Each dome was heat-treated in furnaces the size of barns, then machined to tolerances of less than a millimeter. At Michaud, the S1C came together section by section. The lower skirt was the foundation. Here, the five F1 engines would be mounted, along with fuel lines, instrumentation, and hydraulic systems. The skirt alone stood higher than a house and weighed 40 tons. Above it came the RP1 fuel tank, then the intertank structure, a lattice of aluminum beams that braced the liquid oxygen tank above. Workers welded stringers, longer than railway tracks, to strengthen the barrels. The liquid oxygen tank itself loomed like a silver cathedral dome. It was built upside down, then rotated and mated with the intertank. By the time assembly was complete, the S1C was 10 meters or 33 feet across. 42 meters or 138 feet tall and empty weight was 130 metric tons or 290,000 pounds. Fully fueled, it weighed 2,300 tons or 5 million pounds. To move it, Michaud used custom-built transporters that crawled across the floor at walking speed, guided by teams with radios and hand signals. Every fitting, Every line, every rivet was checked and rechecked, because once those F1 engines lit, the S1C had only 150 seconds to perform flawlessly. The S2 second stage, though built in California, relied on Mashoud for tooling, jigs, and some tank sections. At 24 meters, or 81 feet tall, and 10 meters, or 33 feet wide, it was the most technically difficult of all Saturn stages. Its common bulkhead, a single wall separating liquid hydrogen at minus 253 degrees Celsius, or minus 423 degrees Fahrenheit, from liquid oxygen at minus 183 degrees Celsius or minus 297 degrees Fahrenheit was thinner than a coin, yet insulated to keep the propellants from boiling. The S4B third stage was Douglas's masterpiece, but also built at Michoud. Only 17.8 meters or 58 feet tall and 6.6 .6 meters or 21.7 feet wide, it was powered by a single J2 engine. But its role was critical. Ignite once to place Apollo in Earth orbit and again to send it to the moon. At Michoud, engineers fabricated the S-4B's hydrogen tank, 10 meters long, holding 83,000 liters or 22,000 gallons of cryogenic liquid. Insulation was painstakingly sprayed onto the tank's exterior, layer by layer, then hand-trimmed to millimeter accuracy. In one test, a poorly applied insulation layer shed during flight, causing severe pogo on Apollo 6. Afterward, Michoud teams refined the spray process, developing new foam techniques still used in modern rocketry. Each stage faced brutal inspections. Tanks were hydrostatically tested, filled with water until walls flexed and strained. Acoustic tests bombarded structures with sound waves louder than a jet engine, simulating launch. Michaud workers pressurized tanks until valves screamed, hunting for leaks. Sometimes welds popped, sometimes domes buckled. When they did, teams cut away entire sections and rebuilt them. Quality inspectors were everywhere. NASA had more than 400 quality control staff at Michaud, overseeing every contractor. 
a worker couldn't weld the seam or bolt a fitting without a NASA inspector signing off. The mantra was simple. If it isn't perfect, it doesn't fly. But even a finished stage was useless unless it could reach Cape Kennedy. The S1C stages were too large for road or rail. Instead, Michaud built a dock on the intercoastal waterway. From there, barges like Promise and Point Barrow carried the giant cylinders down the Mississippi River, through the Gulf of Mexico, and around Florida. The trip took weeks. At every port, crowds gathered to see the silver leviathans lashed to barges, dwarfing the tugs that pulled them. The S-4B stages, being smaller, sometimes flew aboard the Aerospace Line's pregnant guppy and later the super guppy, cargo planes so ungainly that observers swore they couldn't possibly lift off. Yet they did carrying rocket stages from Michaud to Cape Kennedy in hours instead of weeks. Each journey was an operation in itself. With weather windows, clearances under bridges, and naval escorts to protect against storms. Between 1964 and 1973, Michaud produced 15 S1C stages, 17 S4B stages, and numerous test articles. Every Apollo mission to the moon, from Apollo 8's daring orbit to Apollo 17's final landing, began with metal shaped, welded, and assembled in that factory. Michaud's craftsmanship was tested on every launch. Apollo 6 shook violently, but the stage held. Apollo 11's S-1C delivered its thrust flawlessly, carrying Armstrong, Aldrin, and Collins toward history. Skylab, America's first space station, was launched by a Saturn V S1C built at Michaud. Its upper stages repurposed to loft a laboratory the size of a house. The factory itself became a quiet hero of Apollo, largely unseen, but present in every weld and rivet that flew. After Apollo, Michaud did not fall silent. It became home to the Space Shuttle's external tank program. For 30 years, every orange-brown fuel tank strapped to a shuttle orbiter came from the same halls where Saturn's stages were born. Today, Michaud builds the core stage of NASA's Space Launch System, the direct descendant of Saturn V. The welding machines are new, digital, and precise, but the echoes of Apollo remain. Inside Michaud, one can still feel the presence of the workers who bent metal into history.